In the Middle East, people have been living together in cities since around 3000 BC. But in the UK, we've only been true city dwellers for a little over 500 years. But by 2009, more than half the world's population lives in cities. In Britain, there have always been you know, centres of population. Uh, centres of population are useful for all sorts of reasons. Um, they're centres of government, you can organise and manage things from there. Um, the centres of trade, uh, but also, of course, people simply like to live together to, to mix with one another. Looking at some of our older towns, it appears that no planning went into them at all. But in Roman times, they were built in accordance to a grand plan. They just lost the plans in the Middle Ages. However, since the 16th century, town planning has become an integral part of any city. But an event in the 19th century led the population of our cities to begin growing at an alarming rate. The Industrial Revolution had an enormous impact in the sense that um, on the one hand you got agrarian reform, so there was lots of people being pushed away from living in rural areas because of mechanisation, so there weren't so many jobs. And lots of people saw the cities as an opportunity for work and gaining employment um, and gaining money, so people moved into the cities they actually lived in pretty horrendous conditions when they got here, um, in many cases. But at that time, there was a huge increase in the size, in the sheer population of cities. The majority of modern urban areas in the UK are not built and planned from scratch. Most have evolved over centuries, often adapting to the role the city has to play. Sometimes, though, a trigger point can suddenly change the course of a city's development. After the Second World War, Great Northern Cities really all were badly damaged by, by bombing. Um, I mean, Manchester in particular, 70% of the city, the, the city's of historic urban fabric, the Victorian buildings and the Edwardian buildings were demolished by bombs. The government put place a very high priority actually on rebuilding the housing stock. Um, there was a priority in sort of affordable ho homes homes fit for heroes, and that was the, the big priority, really. A response to that through, well, well first, you know, short-term programmes of prefabricated housing, very heavy investment in social housing, uh, but also very heavy investment in private sector housing. And it's one of you know, a relatively small number of periods where it says all aspects of housing were flourishing, and social housing wasn't seen just as something for people who couldn't gain private sector housing, but social housing would be available for more or less everybody. There was also a bit of an anti-Victorian backlash at the time as well, um, and there was a view that some of the Victorian houses were, was viewed as slums and, were, and new was great and it was out with the old and with the new. So we, that's, that subsequently led on to some of the sort of great ideas uh, great architects, you know, of the time, Le Corbusier, and how we could probably transport some of those ideas into our cities. Sometimes a trigger to regenerate a city can come from a very different source. Winning the title of European Capital of Culture was possibly one of the most important things that's happened to Liverpool in recent history. Um, it was the catalyst for regeneration of the city. It gave people a confidence to invest in the city. Um, it made the communities and the people of the city feel that they really did have something to be proud of and that people would actually want to come and visit their home, their city um, and invest in it and actually you know, be part of what was going on. Winning a major cultural or sporting event appears to be a guaranteed way to ensure the regeneration of a city. Since the late 80s, Manchester was bidding first for the Olympics, then for the Commonwealth Games. With each new bid, a new venue was built, and in November 1995, it won the rights to stage the 2002 Commonwealth Games. But eight months later, an event took place which sent the city's plans into a whole new direction.
The IRA bond was the catalyst really for the redevelopment of the city centre. The city council had many plans in place already for the redevelopment and over time you know, we would have hoped to have brought all those to fruition. But the IRA bond really allowed a huge amount of public sector money, central, central government money to be released for that and that was more than their match by the private sector. And one of the great lasting legacies of all that is that today the City Council, together with the private sector, work very closely on large scale regeneration projects. And that's something really that uh, has helped transform the city into the city we see today. I think that the impact was probably limited. It I mean, focused attention on Manchester. It perhaps was a stimulus to, to redevelop. It didn't fundamentally change the shape of the city. Mm -hmm.